Page 11, Clock Tower Bells. I have some things to talk about here. This is a theme and variation as far as the form of the piece, the music has forms and all that, okay. You see them labeled, the first two lines is a theme and then the last two li three lines at the bottom is variation. That is, it is a variation of the theme. So you have a simple theme and then you do stuff on that theme, based on that theme, it's called a variation. Let's look it over. It's five lines long. It's the whole page. Treble and bass clef three, four times throughout. You have to check on that because that time signature can change in the middle of the piece. Got to watch out for that stuff. And we have what? Quarter notes, dotted half notes, and eighth notes, and so forth. So we'll have to work out the rhythm here. I want to take it one hand at a time because both hands are kind of busy here. Right hand, you're starting third finger on E here. Put you in this position, and it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, one, two, three. Second line, okay, let's go down to the variation. Third line down, one and two and, one and two and, three and, one and two, C and G together, and then going on, one and two. And one and get that last line one, two, three, one, two. That's a lot of fun, isn't it? Left hand, we're well, starting out with thumb on G here, so down here. And the first line is a, you don't play anything, first measure, second measure, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, second line's the same. Go down to the third line. Well, the first two measures dot a half notes. You got C and a G. One, two, three, and it's a G. And then the third measure, one and two and. One and two and three and one. Rest, rest. Okay. And the last line, they're just dotted half notes. Just play them. Okay, put the hands together. And you can hesitate all over, it doesn't matter right now. We're just trying to figure out how the hands work together here. Yeah. At the beginning, with the first major's right hand and then left hand. And then the left hand gets the first note, and now both hands. You have it here, and here, and then here. See? It's the, you gotta work this out because you're using different fingers. So just work that out. And the second line is similar. Let's go down to the third line. You're playing here and here to, together. One and two and three. Because you're just holding the half dotted half note down. One and two and three and one and two. Remember, you hold the dotted half note down and you play that. Now you got all three notes down. So it's one and two and three and. In the third measure, one and two. These are together and these are together and these are together. That's a little easier because now you're just mirroring, you're using the same fingers on each hand. So it's one and two and three and. Get the idea? The last line, well, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. Work out the hands together and then go back through and get rid of the hesitations. You keep it as slow as you need to, but it has to be a steady beat. And that's all the way through, a steady beat. You can keep it slow because you can always speed it up later. Then you can think about the articulation. We'll connect these. Lift up. Lift up. So just a little lift. It's like taking a breath. I'm just cutting the last note a little short, so I've got time to lift up. Third line, here, connect this, and then lift up. Between the second, third, you lift up there. Lift up. Now, if you want to, you can lift up in the last measure of the third line. Here, it's like taking a breath. Two. If it's tricking you out, you can't quite get it, don't worry about it. Just connect them. And it's a repeated note, you gotta lift up anyway. So it's, it's just I'm saying you can lift up a little longer. Yeah. Which means you're cutting the first note a little shorter because the beat has to be steady. 
and it isn't fast. This is not a fast piece, so you may have time. I don't know how much you're struggling to get it. Just don't worry about lifting up, just play it. And then finally the dynamics. Well, it starts out loud, and it's all melody here. It's a whatever you think loud is. Here, I would say, just let's keep it simple. Just play both hands the same. I mean, ideally, when they're together like that, the right hand would be loud and the left hand would be a little softer. That's loud. Because that's the melody. So it's low, soft. But I'll leave that up to you. If you're struggling with it, you can play both hands the same. And when you get down to the third line, these chords need to be soft. Well, overall, you're coming down to moderately soft MF, moderately or moderately loud. It is, but you have to figure out where the melody is. That's what's moderately loud, and everything else should be in the background. But if that's trip, you're not quite getting it. You play it all the same. But if you can figure out where the melody is, like in the third line, it's here. That's the melody. If you could bring that out and keep everything else in the background, you know, it's a little harder. You're playing those notes with more weight and the other notes with light, very light. So, so on measure nine, you see the numbers at the beginning of the lines and the little boxes are measure numbers. Okay, so measure nine, which is the first measure of the third line. Uh, here, and light. And the next measure, that's loud and soft. They switch. And then here to here. So this and then light. line you get accents on the left hand. Those you're going to play and they're giving you two dynamics. You don't need them. Well you can. I mean when the dynamics they want very specific they might give you extras but normally you get the one dynamic loud with an accent makes it very loud. So in my opinion it's an overkill because the accent takes it up a notch from where it's at. So it's marked loud. If you put an accent on that in the last line that makes it very loud. We don't need anything in this piece to be very loud. So in my opinion, it should be MF at the beginning here, and the accent will take up the loud. Soft. And then the MF should be an MP. Take it down a little bit, because the accent will take it back up to MF. So the first two is and then not quite so loud. Not quite so loud. I don't know why they want the accents on there. They don't really do anything on piano other you play it louder. If we had a wind instrument or a violin or something, then we could do a true accent and it would make a difference, but not on piano. So, in my opinion, you could leave the FF and MF where they are and just take off the accent. Now, they've added pedal. You don't need pedal on it. You do just fine, but they've added it. So, let's see the effect the pedal is having. See, when you Use a pedal, you use it for reasons, and you need to understand the effect it has on the sound. So you always learn a piece without pedal first. So when you add pedal, you can hear that difference. Now, because it's loud at the beginning, I'm going to go ahead and push the pedal down with the note. So I can release the overtones. It's almost like an explosion here. And I'm going to lift the pedal up right after I play the note in the third measure. Right there, because I want to connect those two G's. I want to connect them. So again, it's here. And then here. Same thing in the second line. Lift it up after. Up. There. Third line, same thing. I'm going to push it down. Now here, we're not loud. We're just sort of loud. So now I'm going to play the notes first and then the pedal. Not at the same time. I want to start the note before I release the overtones. But again, 
and I'm going to lift it up after I play the note in the third measure. I want to connect the G's. But they, they're showing the lift up in that fourth line, lift it up. I'm going to connect them. I'm, I'm going to lift it up after I play the quarter note G in the third measure. So, so this is measure 13. And then the last line, because we're loud again, I'm going to push the pedal down with the note to release the overtones immediately. And leave it down to the end. And the hands and the pedal come up together. Everybody comes up. Hmm. Seems to work. That gives a good effect. You hear the difference in sound between having the overtones and not having the overtones. Listen carefully. Let's play it together very slowly and double check all the notes and rhythms. I'm not going to do any dynamics. I'm going to play it all about the same. I'll pedal it as they're showing. It seems to work okay. So I'll give us three counts. One, ready, go. One, two, three. Three. 